Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Empowering Word Ministries Incorporated, and it's our Women's Day service. Today is a touch of orange. I hope you all got your orange on behind the screens. All right, come on, uh, come on in and show us a little bit of orange. We're going to start with a word of <clears throat> prayer. We want to ask our sister Monique to come to the screen to give us a good word of prayer. Amen. As she comes. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, um, who is the author and the finished prophet. Father God, I just want to come to you this morning thanking you um, just for who you are in our lives. Father God, I thank you for just keeping us on last night. God, I thank you for watching over us. God, I thank you for each and every vessel that is on this um, prayer live on this um, Zoom this morning. Father God, Father God, I pray for the um, the vessel that is to bring the word, Father God, I pray that you would use her in a mighty way, Father, in the name of Jesus, to bring the word like never before, Father God. I pray that the, um, the word falls where it needs to fall, Father God. I pray that your spirit would enlighten each and every one of us, God. I pray that the power of God will fall on us like never before, God. I thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, right now for the move that is going to take place, Father God. I thank you for the shift that is going to take place, Father, in the name of Jesus, God. God, I thank you for her life, God. I thank you for her love, God. I thank you for who she is, God. I thank you for the power that is inside, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that is going to be released on this morning, God. God, I thank you for who she is, God. Hallelujah, God. I thank you, God, because I feel in the spirit, God, a, a mighty move of God on today, God. I, hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. I, thank you for who you are, God. I, thank you for what you've done, God. I, thank you for what you will continue to do in our lives, God. I, thank you for the power, God. I, oh, in the name of Jesus, God. I thank you for the power. Oh, glory to your name, God. I thank you for your power, God. Oh, God, I thank you for your power. Oh, glory, I thank you for your power, God. Oh, hallelujah, God. I thank you for the shift now that is beginning to happen, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. Even those that don't know you on today, God, will come to know you, God. In the name of Jesus, God. Demons must flee her in the name of Jesus God in the mention of your name God oh God we thank you oh God we praise you and we lift your name God God we magnify it hey glory fire oh God I thank you God father I had 10,000 tons of angels I couldn't give you enough praise God for all you doing God all you done God and all you will continue to do God father I thank you, God, and let there be anything, God, uh, that I forgot. Please charge it uh, to my head, Father, and not to my heart. Uh, for it's in Jesus' name, I do pray uh, with thanksgiving and honor. Uh, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Glory. Woo! Man, what a good start. Thank you, Sister Woo! Monique, for praying. Amen. Jesus. I, man, if y'all didn't feel that, I. I hope you I hope you just privately text her and ask her to pray for you. Amen. Amen. Ooh, that was good. Uh now it's gonna be time for praise and worship. We're gonna have uh Sister Caprice Verdejo, who will be our worship leader today. Amen. Hallelujah, you can just lift your hands where you are. And take some time with just you and God. Take some time and let him love on you and you love on him. You know, that's what worship is. It's a love moment between you and God. Hallelujah. And let's just stay right there. Hallelujah. You may be in your homes, but we're going to worship right there. Worship right there. Hallelujah. Your bad days, ooh. 
Okay, that's okay. Looks like we may have gotten kicked off. Uh, let's go to the, um, we'll come back to that. We'll finish up with uh, that. Now we'll have the um, scripture read also by Sister Caprice Verdejo. Amen, as she comes. Amen, amen. Welcome to Women's Day. Praise God for another year. For the women at Empowering Word Ministries and all the women that are online, we celebrate you. I will be reading Psalms 20. Six and seven in the NIV version. Now this I know, the Lord gives victory to his anointed. He answers him from his heavenly sanctuary. With the victorious power of his right hand, some trust in chariots and some trust in horses. But we trust in the name of the Lord, our God. We trust God, amen. May the Lord have the blessing to the reading and the hearing and the doing of his word, amen. Amen, and I, I'm so grateful that we hear Brother Elijah in the back praising God along with you, Sister Caprice, amen. Amen. <laughs> now we'll have our church motto. You can say it along with me on the screen. This is the Lord's church. And Jesus is Lord. This is the church that's being established by his word. This is the church that love is building. The gates of hell shall not prevail. This is the Lord's church and Jesus is Lord. Amen. Truly today and every day. <clears throat> if this is your first time joining us here at the Empowering Word Ministries, we're so glad that you took the time to worship with us. You could have been anywhere else, but you came to get a blessing through our church, and we appreciate that. If you'd like to find out more about what our gospel, what our ministry is doing, please, we can be reached at our church email address, theempoweringwordministries at gmail.com. We're also on all social media sites. That's Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And you can find some of our highlights on the YouTube. That's Empowering Word, no space in between the G and the W, Empowering Word Ministries. And now it's time for offering. For a part of the service, we hope everybody can participate in, whether it's financially or by just praying for our church, because we know prayer changes things. We have two options if you'd like to give financially. There's our cash app, dollar sign empowering. Um, our trustee team is asking that you please include your full name in the notes. That's your first and your last name so that your giving statements can be applied. Or you can mail your checks and money orders to Empowering Word Ministries, 22 Hudson Place, Willingboro, New Jersey. 08046. Uh, again, that's our cash app, a dollar sign empowering, or you can mail your checks and money orders to Empowering Word Ministries, 22 Hudson Place, Willingboro, New Jersey. Well, now it's time for announcements. Thank you. Uh, June 5th at 10 a.m. is the board meeting. June 20th is Men's Day, and that's going to be an exciting time. Uh, Minister Isaac Douglas from Washington, D.C. will be the speaker of the hour. June 27th after service will be the church meeting. Are you looking for prayer? Well, to place a name on our prayer and sick and shut-in list, please contact one of the church deacons. That's our lovely Deacon Gigi or our lovely Deacon Sassy. Or you can send a prayer request by email to the Empowering Word Ministries at gmail.com. Now I'm going to do a little station break. We're going to have Deaconess Gigi come and read the intro, give the intro for the speaker. Amen as she comes. Can y'all hear me? Lena K. Tyson was born to the late Anna Teen and William Tyson of Tarboro, North Carolina, and raised in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. 
Lena is the seventh of eight children and is the baby girl of the family. Lena was educated in the Philadelphia school system and graduated from Overbrook High School. After graduation, Lena attended Computer Technology Institute. She's a graduate of the Restaurant School of Philadelphia. Also later attended and graduated from Christian Stronghold Biblical Counseling Course. She is the proud mother of one biological son, Henry Q. Blake Smith and known as the mother and mentor and counsels others. Lena's journey with Christ began with her baptism at the age of eight. She was baptized at Mount Zion Baptist Church where her family were faithful members. At the age of 31, Lena rededicated her life to Christ and joined the Evelyn Graves Ministry Church. She has been running for Jesus faithfully for 34 years in ministry and never looked back. All of her training in ministry took place under the awesome tutelage of her spiritual mother and mentor, Dr. Evelyn Graves. Dr. Graves is an anointed woman of dynamic faith and power who poured into Lena everything she needed to become who God ordained her to be. During her time at EGMC, she has worked in many capacities in ministry and service teaching, drama ministry, singing, prayer, community outreach, graphic art, street evangelism, praise dance ministries, and chef, just to name a few. In 2011, she was led by God to walk in the ministry with her son, prophet and pastor Henry Q. Blake Smith at House of Latter Rain. There, Lena yielded all her gifts for the continued growth of the ministry and to further God's kingdom. During this time, Lena's focus shifted to operating in other areas of ministry, walking in her calling as prophetess, preaching and operating her women's ministry, women of destiny. Wherever she goes and whatever she does, she serves God and his people. Prophetess Lena K. Tyson is the first and foremost a servant of God. She has lived the prophet process of brokenness and to be an example to the believer of how to become an effective vessel for Christ. She embodies unconditional love for all of humanity. Her life is dedicated to the rebirth of people's souls and the rejuvenation of the spirit. As a mother to the masses, God has anointed her to love and to be a conduit for healing. Anyone who knows her, yes, knows, knows her that hurting people, helping people, hurting, helping hurting people is her passion. She is an anointed soul winner, a dynamic intercessor, and an amazing chef. After at 65 years young, she is still fly. Yes, she is. And the best is yet to come. God has delivered her, beautified her, and been her keeper and her help. She stands firmly on Matthew 6, verse 33, and has never wavered. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Her personal motto, I am going to live until I die. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Deke. So to uh, before we get to the minister of the hour, Prophetess Lena Tyson, we're going to have a uh, let's see a praise dance performance. Amen. As Sister Caprice for Day Hill comes. <laughs>
God with my voice And he gave ear to me In the day of my trouble He comforted me
Amen. Amen. Now we're going to have, uh, we're going to cue up that praise and worship one more time before Mother Lena comes. One moment. The Lord is beautiful Sunday morning. Hallelujah. You can just lift your hands where you are. And take some time with just you and God. Take some time and let him love on you when you love on him. You know, that's what worship is. It's a love moment between you and God. Hallelujah. And let's just stay right there. Hallelujah. You may be in your homes, but we're going to worship right there. Worship right there. Hallelujah. Give him a little hand, praise God, it's so good, right? Say it with me. 
came back to say, even our battles have purpose. <laughs> I want to say good morning to the women. First, I want to give honor to God, truly, truly. I honor God. So only he could have gotten me to this place where I am today. I want to give thanks and honor to Pastor John F. Clayton for allowing me on a Sunday to be on the platform. I want to thank Assistant Pastor, one of the women uh, that God had laid on my heart, but me on hers as well, and used her. I want to thank her for the IOG that's in her that she pulls out in other women, the image of God. I thank God for all leadership. I thank you for Prophet Pastor Henry Q. Blake Smith, my son, who encourages motivates me all my life. I thank God for all leadership of Empowering Word Ministry. I'm going to do the best I can today. I can only give you what God has given unto me. So I just want to have a small prayer so I can be moved out the way and God can get in it. Yeah, my. Father God, we thank you right now. I thank you. I am on I am so grateful to you, God, and I am humbled by you, Father, that you see fit today to use the mouth of your prophet, God, the mouth of your woman of God, the mouth of your intercessor, the mouth of me today to speak a word of encouragement to the women all on the Zoom, all on Facebook today that will hear my voice. All the nervousness that's inside of me. I ask Father that you move that over. Emma, move me out the way, me and my flesh, and allow your spirit to speak into the ears, the mind, the hearts, and the spirit of your people today. I thank you for all you want to do through me. Thank you, Father. We all bless you for who you are. We thank you for your son. And we thank you for the Holy Ghost of God. In Jesus' name, amen. I had to tell God to move all that nervousness out the way because he gave me a word to bring forth. Now, today they told me it was Women's Day. And we are some awesome beings. Yes, we are. So when I was asked to bring something for Women's Day, my mind went to women. So my first thought was, well, where do we come from? So God took me on back to Genesis. So my scripture for today is Genesis 2, 21 20 to 23. And the Lord God caused the deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. The word tells us that man was made in the image of God. And because man was made in the image of God, woman was pulled from man's rib. So we too are made in the image of God. He will perfect in us that image, what that image should look like. Because it doesn't always look like what it should in the beginning, just like our lives. It don't always look like what it should. But God himself, through trials, tribulation, persecution, sufferings, drama, and trauma, he will perfect what it should look like 
as we walk this journey called life. Y'all pray for me today. So Adam needed a help me for the purpose to meet humanity and the need of God. So we were taken from a covered place, purposely chosen, the rib of man. Now I had to kind of do a little bit. Yeah, he made me do a little research. I got a little few little notes here. I'm gonna do the best I can for us today. Now I didn't come to beat up on man, to badger man or anything, but we can't do this without man. First of all, God could have took us from anything, anywhere, but he chose man on purpose for the connection he needed to have. So since he chose man and he took that, that rib bone from man, we can't deny man. So they get just a pass today because we had to come through them. We love them and we love all mankind. But God took that rib from man. We were taken from that place. Now God in his infinite, awesome power, wisdom of creation. When he put man to sleep and he took that rib, I had to do a little bit of research about this little rib area. And I said, God, there's 206 bones in this human body. So I asked God, well, why the rib? He began to take me to this thing called the fibrous nature of the paratrondrium. I might not have said it all the way right, but it's there. It is a tissue that allows blood flow to easily pass through your body. The study blood flows helps distribute nutrients necessary to strengthen, there's our strength, and nourish the cartilage for regeneration. God is so awesome that he pulled us from a place, from a bone that regenerates itself. So where whatever he took from man did not lessen man. Man is still whole man. And the bone that he pulled us from, the regeneration allows woman to know that this bone, this tissue that he talked about was this rubbery, this strength, this toughness. That was us. We are part of that. So it lets us know and it let me know that every time that my strength weakens, I can regenerate the strength because that's the way that God made it. He did it from the beginning of time. We can regenerate women when the weakness comes, when the drama comes, when the trauma comes. It's okay, because it's coming. But just know, if you don't know, you won't go to it. We got strength backed up that we can go back and grab a hope to. God is so awesome. There will always be an attachment, no matter what we go through. This is the way God designed it. I'm not messing with God's design, but I want to show him and him to show me what you need for the purpose of me as woman. So I asked God, well, why the rib? So God said, God did not choose a piece of Adam's head so that woman wouldn't be over him. Nor did he choose a piece of Adam's foot so that he would step on her. Rather, our loving, all-knowing, wise creator chose man's rib so that the woman was taken from his side to be his equal from under his arm, to be protected by him and from near his heart to be loved. That's why he chose the rib. Sometimes we're trying to figure out our place and our purpose. Now we may not know it all the time, but God knows Caprice, put the scripture up, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you. Now, a lot of times we're going to feel harm because it may be part of the process. 
but God will bring you to a place and give you hope and a future. I'm trying to hit my, son always tell me, mom, you know, you give your scripture, you give your three points. Now my theme today for the women that God dropped in my spirit is called the strength of a woman because we have strength to survive so many things. Now I went to the Bible because before us, there were always many women in the Bible that were very strong. And there's so many, but for whatever reason, God dropped these three in my spirit. Now, the power of a woman then. So he gave me Deborah. Deborah was a fighter. Deborah was a distinguished judge. She was the leader. She, they called her the mother of Israel. Deborah was strong. She was courageous. Now, she lived during the time where there was much unrest, where we are now. There's a lot of unrest going on right now. She was a godly woman. Deborah wore many hats, as we do most of time. Deborah was a prophet, a poet, an encourager. She was a warrior, she was a wife, and she was a ruler. But one thing I love about Deborah, when God spoke, Deborah obeyed. Now, I have taught my son all his years. If you have learned the voice of God and he speak, obey. This is why I'm here today, because God spoke. And if I've not learned anything else, I've learned how to obey God, come what may. Deborah brought her country and her community victory. God used her. He still pulled a man in because he pulled, I believe his name was Barat. He pulled him in to work with Deborah to lead this victory for the country. But they gave, he said, if I bring him in, and he said, well, I need Deborah to go with me. So God said, okay. So since Deborah had to go with him, Deborah got the credit. He gave it to the woman. Still yet, the awesome leader that she is. We're not going to put man aside because they're attached to us. They're part of us. But today I come to encourage the women to know that there is a fighter inside of you, no matter what. Then he, he gave me Anna the prophetess. Now, Anna was a praying woman. Anna had married seven years went by her husband died. Well, it did not stop Anna. Anna would go to that temple and pray and fast day and night. She prayed and she believed God for the promise to have an encounter with the Savior. And yes, she did. God granted her that. And I say that to say this. First, Deborah, the fighter that's in you, fight. Fight what was right. Fight what was yours. Fight. Stand up. Do not back down. Let the fighter in you. Because Jesus goes before us. Anna, what stood out was her devout, constant prayer. Now, you know, there's a script in the Bible that says men ought to always pray. And we do. We should. Because there's always something to pray about. If we look back at our lives, we can always see the trail of prayer being needed. Now, I thank God for the Anna that's in my life. Now, I might not be in the temple uh, day and night and 24-7, but the spirit of prayer is in my life. Let the spirit of prayer be in your life. Everybody don't pray the same way. Everybody don't pray in the same position. But you must learn to know that there's power in prayer. It will change things. It will change you. It will change your enemy. It'll change your children. It'll change a world. So we have to know that that power of prayer, like Anna the prophets, let that spirit fall on us. Let that fighter spirit of Deborah fall on us. Then he took me over to one of my faves, Rahab. Now Rahab was a prostitute. 
See, when he took me to right hand, because I didn't choose these women, God dropped them in my spirit. So I said, okay, because you know I ain't all that good. But I know how to hear the voice of the Lord. When he dropped Rahab, a discerning deliverer, he called her. A Canaanite woman in the city of Jericho. She was a prostitute. She had her little house, her little business. So many people stopped by. Many men stopped by all the time. Now we done left back there Moses and he missed the promise. Now, now we got Joshua. Joshua going in. Joshua had some courage, okay? Joshua was going in, but Joshua wanted to know what's going on over there. So he sent two spies to go in to see what's going on. See, in Jericho, they were already afraid because they had heard about the part of the sea. They had heard of the miracles that had happened. They had heard how Jesus fed for man from it. They heard all these things. So they had some knowledge of the power of God and they also had to know they couldn't be God. But they still, and they, they were unbelievers. They were non-believers, they didn't believe, but there's something inside of them knew. It's something with this God. So the two spies went in and they went to Rahab's house and Rahab hid the guys. See, Rahab knew something. She might've been a prostitute, but let me tell you something. Something in Rahab knew and had faith enough to know the God that we serve. We may be whatever we are, whatever people call us, whatever we choose to be, but I'm telling you, there's a God that's inside of us. When the comforter came, he resonated. He rests himself inside these temples, inside these vessels. So God can stir up the mind. He can stir up the spirit. God is God all by himself. He can bring anything to your remembrance. Rahab had been making a lot of bad choices, but God still had a plan for Rahab's life. Let me tell you women, I don't care where you are. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your character is. God got a plan that we can't even touch. He got a plan. See, sometimes we look at people and their titles or their profession or what they do. And it may not look like this So I know God gonna use her. I know God gonna use Mary. I know, and, oh no, but he ain't use her. We don't know who God gonna use because what got Rahab to be used was the willingness of her spirit. Rahab was willing to be used. And in the way of her willingness to be used, she told God, God spared her life and her family. He gave her instructions to drop that scarlet down out the window to show them here is a sign to let me know that this is your house. There should be something on us that says, God, this is you. This is a part of you. Spare my life. I got something that you can work with. We're not damaged individuals. Capri sang the song. God said it in the seven days of creation. Everything he made was good. How we turn out is another whole story. That's okay because there's a process of life that's going to bring us from ashes to beauty. Okay? Joyce Myers, let us know. T.D. Jakes, let us know. Women, thou art loose. We have been loose, women, to do the thing we got to do for God. I love the story of Rahab, her kindness, her faith, God's redemption, and his love for her put Rahab in the genealogical line of Jesus. He healed her prostitution. He healed her mind and let her fall in the lineage of Jesus. 
That's the power of our God. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what it looked like. My life has been rough. I done scraped and crawled. He said he pulled us from the muck and miry clay. Yes, all of us have that testimony that we have come through some stuff. Everybody's story is different. That's okay. There's been a lot of stuff that we've had to come through. But the Deborahs, the Annas, the fighter, the prayer woman, and if you're not a prostitute, put whatever else you're in there. Whatever you are, check this out. If you're willing, if your spirit is willing, God will use you. My spirit was willing and is willing. And I will allow God to use me. Even when I may want to say no, my spirit speaks and I know to obey it. So I thank God for these three women. Now, the strength of a woman. So many strong women began as broken little girls. There is brokenness in us as small children sometimes. But through that process, he makes us strong women. So there are many, many things that we have. The first point was where we came from. This point is how God uses us. This is why I want to bring these three women to you. Now, this is the way he uses us today and even back then. As a mother, a love that cannot be separated. I don't care what you go through. A mother's love is a mother's love. And it holds on forever. Even when they're grown, even when they're cut up, even when it doesn't matter. The love of a mother cannot be separated. Then there's a grandmother in us. And a grandmother's love, it just spread across the family. It's like butter, okay? She just spreads it. She loves no matter what. Even when your mother may say, no, whatever. Grandma said, come here, baby. Okay? Grandma got you covered, okay? A sister shared burdens that is taken to Jesus. I am the... It was five of us. I'm the little sister. But I tell you, when things were going with my sisters, and even still now, I'm not to take it to Jesus. I'm going to share the burden, okay? Because really, that is what I'm supposed to do as a woman, as a sister. Then some of us have to be a wife, carrier of many tasks, okay? Because a wife got to be so many things in a marriage, whether it's a whole marriage or a broken marriage, because every marriage doesn't stay whole. Yes, it is reality. But I tell you now, even in that place that that marriage stays together or falls apart, the strength of the woman inside of you will regenerate itself and cause you to stand flat footed and firm and trust in your God. Then there's a worshiper in us. I empty out of myself. I adore, I love, I worship, I honor, and I exalt him because God will protect his worshipers. You better know it. Praise her to give him what he created us for. Life giver brings new life into a dying world. Breadwinner, stepping in when needed. Educator, to empower and input knowledge to be passed on. Entrepreneurs, the mental strength to believe and begin a new thing in your life. Survivor, can come through the worst of things. We are some strong women. Overcomer, nothing will hold her down as long as she has Jesus on her side. It's hard to hold me down. 
I've come through some stuff. I probably got some more stuff to go through. It's all good. But I tell you, I'm an overcomer. Why? The Bible says so. They called us overcomers. They called us victorious. They called, The Bible has whatever you're going through is in the Bible. It's in there. It's in the manual. It's in the word. And then God's helpers. God uses us to help build lives and reach lost souls. There's a love and a softness that he put in us that came from him that will reach those that are lost. A strong woman. A strong woman is one who feels deeply and loves fiercely. Her tears flow just as abundantly as her laughter. A strong woman is both soft and powerful. She is both practical and spiritual. A strong woman in her essence is the gift to the world. See, we got a whole lot in our essence, okay? The affection of a mother, the devoutness of a wife, the caring of a daughter, trustworthiness of a sister, loyal friend, selfless grace, dignity. Listen, virtue, strength, patience, resilience, fortitude. Listen, we pack with power. You got to know that you're packed with power. The word of God says, as a man thinking, if you don't think it's in there, you ain't going to pull on it. I pull on the things that he showed me that's inside of me. Now, that was the first thing was where we came from. That good old rib that regenerates itself. Let the strength keep regenerating itself. Then we went to how God uses us. He's the same to yesterday, today, and forevermore. So whatever and however he used the women in, he's still using us now. He hasn't stopped. And the third point I have is what we should be doing. Now, he gave me the word woman. So I, I looked at it, you know, because half the time I don't know what I'm doing. But I know how to hear the Holy Ghost. And he gave me the word woman, W-O-M-A-N. So I said to God, okay. So he gave me woman, and it says, woman, women, know and learn who you are in God. A lot of times we don't do a lot of things because we don't know who we are in God. We know how to do stuff outside of God. Uh, let's just know who we are in God. It just means that he'll use you more. Listen, I'm here today. I don't even know how this happened, but God. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was a woman, her humility, her trust, her willingness to be used, her obedience. She was an ordinary woman and God used her for extraordinary thing in this world. That's the W. Then there's the O in woman, opposition. Let not your differences of anything stop you from going after what was already promised to you. Now the Samaritan woman I pulled on here, okay? The Samaritan woman, there was a lot of opposition between the Samaritan and the Jews, okay? When she went to that well to get that water, okay, she met Jesus. At first she didn't know it was Jesus, but it was a Jew. But he gave her something that would carry her through the rest of her life. He gave her living water, one that will spring up whenever she got thirsty on anything. See, because no matter what your thirst is, the living water will quench it. Trust me, I've been there. Whether it's drugs, a man, food, whatever, the living water will quench your thirst that you'll thirst no more. Then there was the M in woman, manifestation manifestation of God's power in your life. I went to Ruth. Ruth was a beautiful woman. Now here we have Ruth and Naomi. Now the men died. So now who's going to cover us? And Ruth said that she was going back home. And she left uh, Naomi. I mean, she, I mean, Naomi said she was going back home. So she told Ruth, you can stay. You and your sister Orpah. We don't hear a lot about Orpah. Orpah just decided to stay. Ruth said, no, I'm going to go where you go. 
I'm going to follow who you follow. I'm going to love your God like you love your God. Obedience, loyalty, trustworthiness, the image of God was in her. And she followed the woman of God. And it led her to the man that God had for in her life. Obedience. The word of God says better than sacrifice. She obeyed what God had put inside of her. That image of God is in us. That image of God was in Rahab. I don't care that she was a prostitute. Somewhere in there was an image. God had to manifest it. Her loyalty to Naomi. She positioned herself to receive the fulfillment of the promise by living in the image of God. And it manifested through her compassion for the woman of God. Then there's the A in woman anointed. We are anointed to do the assignments that he has called us to do. Now I looked at Esther. Now I always call Esther mission impossible. Okay. But Esther was seemed like a mission impossible. Was it? Because Esther mean hidden. Now we already know we got a little Esther in us because he pulled us from a hidden place, but he used us openly for the glory of God and for the purpose that he designed us for. We are powerful women, just being a woman. I don't care what age you are. I don't really care what color you are. Women are women. We come in many sizes. We come in many shapes. We come in many hair colors. Okay, we come in a whole lot of stuff, okay? But we're still labeled as women and women of God. And we're still women of God that you God manifest that thing and pull off the layers he need off of us for us to walk in that image. Now the end that's in woman, I called it now faith. Now faith, the woman with the issue of blood. This woman had an issue for 12 long years. Now we women know about the blood. For 12 years, I couldn't handle it when it was just three days. Now she had 12 years that she was dealing with, okay? But her faith, the word of God says that faith will move a mountain. And that was her mountain. See, I don't know what your mountain is, but put some faith to it. And one thing about faith, when you put the faith to it, you got to believe this thing. You just can't say, God, I believe you and I trust you. And then you walk in all this disbelief and not knowing if he's going to do No, trust him. Walk in the faith that he's put inside of you. That mustard seed faith can grow up to be a big tree. What is your issue that you want to trust and have faith for so that Jesus can heal whatever's in you. No matter how long you've had it, one thing about the women with the issue of blood, she pressed her way. The word of God says, press towards the prize of the high call, which is in Jesus. We can press towards the high call. There's so many things as a woman we go through, we battle. Our drama and our trauma will not stop us. We have to realize the woman that's in us. Know who you are in God. Don't let your differences stop you. Let the power, let the manifestation of God's power come alive in your life. Know that you are anointed to do something. The word of God said he gave all men gifts. And then the now faith. Believe now. Don't matter when God manifests it. Don't matter when he do it. But you, you got to believe it now. He's a right now God if that's what he want to be. See, one thing I love about God, he can do it any way he wants. He's sovereign. He's sovereign. Women know that you've been loose. 
to do a whole lot of things. I thank him today. See, I didn't know I was loose to stay here and be given the word. Now, I, I could do some things for God, but he seemed to be unveiling me why I'm not fully sure, but he ain't got to tell me until he ready. But one thing I learned to do is I was a woman who came through a hard addiction. Yeah, my struggle through my addiction, about to lose everything. But he stepped in to show me the woman that he had created inside of me. So women, I speak to you today, stand strong, stand flat-footed. I don't care what the weakness is. I don't care what the issue is. There's a little bit of Mary in us. If it's just a fact of being willing and being obedient, it's a little bit of Samaritan woman in us, okay, that we can receive that living water. It's a little bit of roof in us. We can be loyal to somebody and help and let God pull out the image of God in us. It's a little bit of Esther in us. Listen, your mission is not impossible. What he did then, he can do now. Because God said in his word, he is no respecter of person. So if he did it then, he can do it now. So what you, listen, the word of God says, is there anything too hard for God? No. So your stuff you're going through is not too hard. And don't ever forget now faith. Faith has power. Faith is just trust. It's belief. Knowing that God can, God will. And God is doing a great thing through us as women. I want, I told God, whatever you have for me to say today, I'm going to say it. And my prayer is that young and older women, whoever's on here, that your heart has been encouraged, that your heart has been strengthened just a little more. I never know how and what I just present, but he taught me a long time ago, the presenter never know what the receiver receives. So I have to do my part, just present. Now, whatever the receiver received, because I don't know what you're looking for. I don't know where you're hungry at, but God said, feed my sheep. And I feed all the time on the natural. So now I'm feeding on the spiritual side. So I hope I fed you something that caught your appetite. Whether it was an appetizer, a breakfast, a lunch, a dinner, or dessert, or something that just quenched your thirst. Okay, because it's in us to be, to do, to stand strong as women. We got work to do. And guess what? We gonna do it. And ain't nobody. And I used to say, ain't no devil in hell gonna stop me. Okay, because the power that resonates in my life, through my life and over my life, the devil can't touch me. Yeah, my, he was kicked out a long time ago. He was defeated a long time ago. When he got kicked out, defeat came to him. He can't stop you. Don't be afraid to do what God is calling you to do. He puts people around us to push us, to encourage us, to support us, to love us, to give to us. All of us have walked somewhere in our life where we have scraped and crawled. And God picked us up, still picking us up. Don't worry about that you cut up sometime. I'm the best cut up there is, I tell you now. See, because I had to keep it real. I ain't playing with this thing, okay? I can't be nobody but Lena Tyson, no matter what you call me, no matter what you say about me. But I know I got to know who I am. In God, and I got to know who I am for myself. It's all right to cut up a little bit. There's two words he always gave me, limits and boundaries. Use them. It's all right. Do what you got to do. It ain't about us no way. It's about somebody else. So let them go ahead with that brokenness because all of us been broken. And I don't know, listen, my, my young friend preached a sermon one time, broken to be broken again. See, we don't know when the brokenness stops. But I tell you this, don't ever forget it. The broken pieces of your life make somebody else life whole. Let them use you. And I have a good minister friend, Minister Marilyn Grace. She does a little thing on Facebook, three words. She do it every day. Well, today, God gave me three words for the women. And my three words to y'all as I close out is women are 
amazing. That's us. We are amazing. Okay. Now put some grace on that. Okay. I love y'all so much. And the one thing about me, I ain't got to know nobody to love them. God put some love in me that, that he put so deep that it's like that living water. It just spring up. In my shape. When I come near you, when I walk by you, if it calls for love, God said, give it. Because the only way to keep it is to give it away. I love everybody on here, men and women. But today, I uplift, I support, I encourage women. Let us be who God made us to be. See that little rib regeneration thing? Just know when, it, when that stuff go down, and you feel that weakness coming, you find yourself, we are in many places. We're in many places in our life, struggling through many things. I have people not going into surgery, lost mothers, lost children, lost friends lost job so much happens but guess what your strength can be regenerated to push you through anything don't ever forget it the god we serve has all power in his hands i love you ladies i hope i encourage or bless somebody today i told god don't let me live this life and not in care i don't care if it's one soul because see i think about them sheep that one that got away Go get them, encourage them, put aside your differences, okay? For somebody else, I have to learn to do that. So much love to all you women today, even to the brothers, I, you know, I ain't prejudiced, okay? But the day is just about us, okay? <laughs> and that's how it's going there. You know, I love y'all, uh, keep praying for me. I never know what God is doing with me. I just walk with him. I learn how to follow. God, he taught me to be a follower because one day he may need me to lead somebody somewhere and especially back to him. Okay? I love you, ladies. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Mother Lena, for your continued yes. You bless us consistently here at Empowering Word. Woo. I don't know about y'all, but I got mine. I don't know, but and I'm not sharing. And I'm not giving it to none of y'all. I'm going to keep it for myself. Thank you, Mother Lena. Now we're going to have remarks from one of our co-chairs. Deacon is Gigi. Then we're going to have remarks from uh, the pastor of this great church, Pastor John Clayton, and then final remarks and benediction by Pastor Dana in that order. Amen. As they come. I'm here. Wait a minute. Hi. <laughs> hey, everyone. Mother, don't, mother, listen here. Mother, do you hear me? Do you hear me? I want you to hear me loud and clear. The purpose was to ignite the women. I am on fire. Yeah, you hear what I'm saying? Mother, you said, why you? This is why. This is why. We appreciate you. We love you for your dedication, for your wisdom, for your purpose in life to ignite us on this day. It's saved, it's on Facebook Live, it's on Empowering Word YouTube Ministries. Anytime we feel like we've fallen short and need a uplifting word, mother, it's right here today. It is documented and it is so. You always say, let the Lord use you and drop your jaw. The Lord dropped your jaw today and you gave an empowering word to empower us women going forward. We had a whole month and you closed us out just right. In your way, the only way that you know how. Mother, you showed up, you showed out and you cut up. And we love you and we appreciate you and we thank you. And to all the women of a power and word, I'm speaking for them. I'm speaking with them. Come on out from off of mute and give mama some love because she showed up. Today. Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Hallelujah. 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 Well done. Well done. Yes. Well done. Finished. This is not over. This is just the beginning. It was called Ignite for a Purpose. To get the wheels burning, to get us going. And we appreciate you, Mother, and we love you. And Empowering Word Women, we have work to do. This yes. is our time. Yes. This is our season. This is our place. And everyone is in line and doing what they're supposed to do. Just keep on keeping on. From yes. The- praise the purpose of praise earlier today for caprice and her testimony and her soul. yes All yes long, our empowering saturdays listen there is nuggets and and jewels that have been dropped this month uh, yes god and i love and appreciate each and every one of you and i'm gonna do good and i'm not gonna cry and i'm gonna get on out of here and i'm gonna pay <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, thank you. God bless you and praise the Lord, everybody. And let everybody praise the Lord. It's so uh, great to be among you, among these great women. Amen. I am grateful, amen, that Mother Lena graces us with her presence. Amen. And truly honored, amen, that she worships with us and has blessed us. She prays for us. Amen. Amen. And that is the reason why. Amen. This is the reason why she's lifted our ministry. She's lifted our women. Amen. She's lifted the leaders of this church. Amen. For such a time as this. And we don't take it for granted. Amen. What God has done through this woman of God. Amen. In her life of sacrifice. Listen, God's got a way and God knows the way. Amen. And he is the way. And so we bless the Lord. Congratulations to the women. Amen. For this mighty word for every listen from prayer on from the prayer. Good God Almighty. Yes, amen. God. The worship leading. Amen. The purposeful praise ministry. Amen. It's been a blessing. I don't know what the brothers are going to do, but amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> amen. Bless, amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. We're going to figure something out. Amen. Thank you so much, Mother, for pouring into us. And I pray that everything, amen, that you've poured amen. out. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. Glory. That there be nothing lacking. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There be nothing lacking. That God would replenish. Hallelujah. You in every way. Hallelujah. Both mind, body, soul, and spirit. God, let your spirit rejuvenate her and strengthen her for her assignment that is ahead. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to stop talking because it's Women's Day. Love you, women. Listen, we can't do nothing. Amen. Listen, in this ministry, amen, the women run it. <laughs> the women rule the world at Empowering Word. We can't do nothing without the women <laughs> of Empowering Word. And I'm going to say this, the women loving on the men. Amen. Yeah. Loving on us. Pure, unconditional love. And they put up with our shenanigans. Amen. <laughs> we, lose every, we lose every year, Mother Lena, but we still try with our shenanigans. <laughs> Amen. We love you. Amen. We love you. Go ahead, pa- Pastor Dana. Amen. Did you get in touch with David? Did you send a text message over to David? I did, but I didn't get a response, but it's okay. He'll respond. You know. <laughs> all right. God, love you all. Love you, Pastor. Oh, so I can just, Lord God, Gigi and Pastor said it all. But let me just say, because I got to keep myself together because I've been, you know, I feel like I can run and, you know, I got space, thank you, Lord, in my room to run, but I can't run and talk at the same time. But let me just say, Ma'ayana Basia, Mom Lena, thank you, Holy Ghost. God used you mightily today. You broke down this word of God. You broke, da- listen, if I never knew that I'm walking in God's image, my yeah. God, Jesus. Yeah. I know today, thank your Holy Ghost. I know that it is time for me to listen. Thank your Holy Ghost to what he is saying. If I wasn't listening clearly before, I know I gotta listen right now. Holy Ghost, I thank you because of the purpose that God has on my life. 
Yes. And not that I don't listen, but sometimes, you know, it's, we had those days and those moments. <laughs> but I, I, out of my sea, I am grateful to the Lord that every single time we need something, thank and he always comes through for us. He always comes through for us. He always, I, I don't think sometimes, you know, with leaders, I'll speak for myself. Sometimes, you know, I don't tell everything. I don't always tell all of the challenges that I go through. I don't always share that. Not because, you know, not because I don't want to, but because I'm so programmed, Holy Ghost, I'm so programmed to fight through it because God has given me strength. So that's what I do. But there are moments when I feel like, God, what else is there? But you today let me know that there is purpose. Thank you, Lord God. And even with Capri singing the song, that there is purpose in my trial. There is purpose. I have a purpose in God and I can't stop right now. He has given me strength and I must go forth. No matter what it looks like, no matter how I feel. So I thank you. I, I said that the second, because we've been we've been doing empowerment uh, Saturdays now, I think since January. And the, the second one that we did was the igniting of women. You spoke that when I tell you, you have ignited us to another place. And if we don't choose Holy Ghost, if we don't choose to take what the Father has spoken to us and run with it, shame on us. It ain't nobody's fault but ours. If we choose to sit and not do what God has called us to do, shame on us. If we choose, and I'm speaking to myself, if we choose to think that ain't nobody going to listen to you when you write your book, shame on me. If that's what we choose, I ain't choosing that. But if we choose to not hear and do what the Father has given us to do, shame on us. Because let me tell you something, he has given us so much. Let me tell you, we can fly right about now, Holy Ghost. We can fly right about now. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. There ain't nothing that we can't do based on the word that we've been getting. So yeah, it's time for us to continue in doing all the things that, that the Father has given to us. Not only that, but to push our men. Because you, you spoke on that too today to push our men. When you talked about Holy Ghost, the rib and the heart, and I kept saying to myself, Father, you took us from, you, you took us from the rib so that we can always cover the men's heart. And I'm saying, Father, every opportunity, because I got boys, every opportunity I get, I'm going to be praying for them, covering them. Because why? That's my responsibility as a mother. Mom, I'm, I'm going to shut up because I'm excited. And you know, when I get excited, I'm animated and I can talk all day. We ain't got all day. But you encouraged my heart today. And I know every woman is encouraged. I know that they are. Thank you for your obedience. Thank Pastor, you. thank you for just allowing us to do what God has called us to do, the women. Thank you, Pastor, for trusting us. Thank you for trusting us, my God, Jesus. Caprice, Keep what dancing. can I say? Keep singing. Uh, for real. For real, Caprice. For real. Don't allow obstacles. Amen. Mother said it today. Don't allow obstacles to dictate what God has in store for you. Amen, amen. Monique, can I just tell you, listen, you ought to pray like that all the time. <laughs> when you praying for people, when you praying for y'all know my when you praying for yourself, you tear down walls, because today you set the tone for what God wanted to do. Yes.
Anna. When you praying for yourself, you pray like that. You tear down walls. Don't you allow the enemy to, to make you second guess the anointing that's on your life. You are anointed of God. Yes. Thank your Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Gigi, what can I say? Gigi's the chairperson. I'm just here to help. G, another good one. Another great one. God did it. God did it. And now I'm excited. I'm excited about what's about to happen. Amen. I'm excited. All right. I'm going to be quiet. Father, I thank you for this day. Thank you, God. This truly was the day that you made. And we're going to continue to rejoice and be glad in it. Yes, God. God, have your way and move by your spirit. I thank you. And I love you. Continue, Lord God, to speak to us throughout this day. It's in your name that we pray. I got to say this. Jennifer, <clears throat> you are the best kept behind the scene secret ever. Mm -hmm. Let me just tell you, I, I, because I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge you. And the Lord kept saying, you, don't forget, in the back of your head, he, at the back of my head, and he kept saying, don't forget, because I told you that first. Lord, forgive me for being disobedient. Jennifer, I want to say to you, <clears throat> thank you for your obedience, your faithfulness, even with the thousand questions that I know I have all the time. Yesterday, how you were helping me. Today, uh, uh, just how you maneuvered the service today. Thank you for being obedient to the voice of God. Continue to hear his voice. Continue to hear his voice. Continue to hear his voice. You have been purposed to yes. do some great things in the kingdom Amen. of God. Amen. I absolutely love you. Women, I love y'all. Y'all know how it is. Love y'all. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Thank you for your consistent see every um empowerment saturday we still got our baskets to go women because because we ain't raised the money like we like we did last year so we got some work to do it's i really love y'all what'd you say pastor room for the men <laughs> yes we gonna help the men <laughs> we gonna help y'all out oh, we got you pastor we got you <laughs> But thank you, women. I absolutely love you guys. This concludes our service. Amen. 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 I love you all. <laughs> thank you, everybody on this Zoom that's been praying for me. Thank you. Don't stop. <laughs>